software development methodologies can be split into two groups, horizontal and vertical. Vertical development creates a working system in the least possible time with the simplest possible requirement. Horizontal development, on the other hand, uses a base set of components and builds on them on a starter basis until it finally reaches the user requirements. Each system has its benefits and drawbacks. The benefit to horizontal approach is that the user requirements define everything at every level so that your services at the very bottom of the process take into account all of the user requirements at the top at the, from the very beginning of the project. This allows you to plan and test the precise nature of your subcomponents from the very outset of the project. You will know that the specifications for each component should not change throughout the entire development cycle. The problem with this approach is that requirements are never static. Specifications are never perfect. And implementations are never perfect. What happens in the end is that there needs to be a lot of rework done because of poor user requirements um, or, or specifications. And a minor change to the requirements can create an enormous change to the entire project. Um, for example, one page may need changing and that cha change may filter down through everything that page depends on, right down to the core services of the system. This approach is very often responsible for the 99% complete syndrome, where the project on schedule looks like it's 99% complete, but when the users use it, uh, it's nowhere near complete. The primary principle of the vertical strategy is to deliver something as soon as you possibly can. Instead of finding the user requirements of everything, we focus on the user requirements of a very small subset, and we act to deliver that small subset of components and get a complete system working even though it is only a small subset of the requirements. In the next iteration, we expand the user requirements and make changes to the initial system. Because the users are using the initial system, they can feed back and modify the behavior and correct any issues in the, in the requirements themselves. So that we, we find out early what the problems are in a project rather than waiting until most of the system is already built as with the horizontal approach. The problem with this approach is that user requirements discovered later on in the process can significantly affect the architecture of the project underneath. For example, you might start with a specific set of user requirements which are on the, the edge of the problem domain and if you start basing your system around that, later on you might find that there is a generalization where you've already hard-coded a lot of the business logic. A focus on immediate requirements can sometimes not do justice to the entire scope of the project. It may lead programmers down false paths to develop systems which are wholly incompatible with the remaining specifications for the project. Obviously we must strike a balance between the horizontal and the vertical approaches. You must do enough analysis on your project to understand what the important aspects and the important subcomponents will be in the project. But you don't want to design everything. You have to recognize that user requirements will change, specifications may alter, and by using the horizontal, sorry, vertical approach, you can design things part, part at a time and be more flexible in terms of the development process. Developing based on only the vertical system, however, means that you can't see far enough ahead to see obvious problems. Therefore, the balance. Thank you.